Hello everyone, Donna Don here again with the next update on the War Corsair project. Alright, so this past week all I did was work on the canopy and the windshield. I finally uh, got that all finished up. <clears throat> Took a while. I mean, it doesn't fit perfect because of this, again, that little dovetail or whatever you want to call it that's on there. You know, it should be a nice smooth joint across here. So that bubble really needs to be just a little higher in arc. So uh, eventually I'll probably make another one. But for now, we're going with it. Uh, it doesn't fit exactly perfect. It's kind of hanging out here some. So, but uh, it's in. And then, as you can see here, these are popped up a little bit. So I'm going to try to put some double-sided basting tape under there see if it holds it. But that's the one I was talking about. Um, if they become a, an obstruction to my view, I can just cut them out. You know, if it doesn't be a clear, clear view. Uh, underneath this trim, I have black uh, foam. It was the uh, this is loose here because it's hitting hitting here on both sides, right in the very front. So I need to kind of I've, I've loosened them up so I can get under there with something and try and bend these corners up a little bit, and then I can tighten that screw back up there. Uh, Got to clean this off. The ins it's dirty on the inside. <clears throat> so, but that took me most of the week. Uh, again, that's aluminum. Those pieces, 30, 30 some thou pieces of aluminum. So now, the only thing left is there's a the other half of the canopy latch has to go. You can kind of just make out the. You can see that chrome piece inside. That's the latch, it's a window latch. And the other piece has to go on the frame on the inside. I have to cut it down because it's too long. Uh, put that in, and then, as you can see, this will pull a little tighter once you get in and lock it. Uh, it's probably touching a little up here. I may have to file, I don't know. Uh, but I planned on putting a little piece of foam in there to seal that gap. And also back here, you know, this is too high as well. But I can put a piece of uh, foam underneath there so when this pulls down, it's not all the way in on that side. I think it's possibly touching on the frame. I can go around and massage the frame so it closes better with a sander. Uh, peeled off the stuff there, but this is kind of what I ended up with. This is the pattern. This is what the basic of the, the windshield looks like. So I had to take the plexiglass off the window, they have the front windshield, and make this pattern. I made it about a quarter inch longer on the bottom. And then I went in and drew up the rest and and then that was for the windshield and this is how big the pattern had to be to make the frame to go around the sides across the back of the top and the sides and then this strip was the front strip it kind of goes on like this that's the radius I put in the corners to match when it goes on here so oops sorry <laughs> that's what I did this week and then after drilling all the holes in the aluminum, I had to dimple them like this. See a little dimple there. What I did is I clamped the uh, plexiglass to the, the the tin aluminum framework to the plexiglass, and then I went in from the inside and drilled out. And then uh, the plexiglass is countersunk. And what I used to countersink it is this little burr here. That's a 87 degree, I believe. It's an automotive countersink because that's the screws. The hardware store screws use 87. Aircraft screws, you can get them 87, but most of them are 100 degrees, so it's a little flatter. And then all I did is I took a chunk of aluminum here and I drilled, drilled a hole just big enough for the screw to go in. One of these screws, like so. And then again, this was countersunk there. So then what I did is I just took the aluminum, put it over the hole, put the screw through the hole, and I just put it in a vise, squeezed it, and it made me a you know nice perfect little dimple. So that was kind of time consuming. And then uh, this is the, the foam rubber I'm talking about. Again, this, if you remember I mentioned that this is a material for um, toolbox drawers. You cut it, put it in there, and set your tools on them, and it's uh, keeps them from kind of sliding around and quiets it down. So that's all that is. That was just a big roll, big roll, and this is all I got left of it. So I can't remember how. It was probably close to two feet 
18 to 24 inches by it's probably four or five feet long. wasn't very expensive. I picked it up at Lowe's uh, down by their toolboxes. So <laughs> that's kind of where I'm at. Now I wanted to. Uh, this past week was pretty decent uh, weather-wise. It did finally rain the end of the week, but. Uh, what I wanted to do today, but just so stinking hot today, it was back in the mid to upper 80s and high humidity again. I had the door closed all day and it was fairly cool in here. I just opened it up to pull the gyro out so I could give you guys a better view of this thing. So now it actually, you know, starting to look more like a Corsair. <clears throat> but what I was looking to do today was get out my uh, <clears throat> jig I built for weighing the airplane. I w I wanted to, uh, it's this framework back here. I gotta dig this out. And what this does, it uh, <clears throat> reduces the weight of the aircraft on the scale. Basically, you put, put this underneath there. The tire sets right on top of this strap. And then the scale sets underneath this here. So this was made to fit my old bathroom scale, that old brown scale sitting there underneath, underneath here. That. So it doesn't need to be accurate. It just got to be able to basically be consistent when it weighs. But essentially, like I say this will just lay down on the floor like so, and the tire sets right in the middle of this strap because that's one foot from there to there. And I think it's four feet overall length. I can't remember if it's like four to one. If you put the weight there and you weigh it out on the scale, I'll have to just put it on the scale and stand out and see what it is. I can't remember when I build it. But it takes a 300 pound scale and literally turns it into, you know, like a thousand pound scale. But what you have to do is you have to measure the height of this off the floor and you have to block that wheel up the same height as if this one's sitting on here. Uh, that sets on the scale, but that's made to be level with that scale. So then you weigh it, and you switch them over, and then you weigh it again, and then you just take the scale and throw it underneath the tail and weigh it. But the aircraft has to be perfectly level. And on this airplane, those long runs, right where the track is, back there, that is perfectly level with the center line of the airplane. So when I pick the plane up on the tail to get it level, throw a level on that, you level it this way and that way, and then you weigh it. So I'm going to weigh it, basically just to weigh it, I wanted to just throw the scales under it today just to get a basic weight of the front and then just throw the bathroom scale under the tail and get a weight on the tail as it sits. That'll give me essentially an empty weight and then I'll take the wings and I'll just throw them on the scale one at a time and get the weight and that should give me a complete uh, gross, well not gross, but empty empty weight without me or fuel in it. And then from there I'll take and uh, <clears throat> put get in it and then do the actual weight and balance. Uh, I need to get the empty weight for the plane to put on the ID tag that I got put on the tail. So it needs an empty and a gross weight. So I need to weigh it before anything else. So <laughs> that's kind of going to be it for this week folks. I'm going to cut this one short i got some other things I want to take care of tonight. So it's already coming up on well, it's 6 o'clock right now. So, Well, hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, feel free to leave any comments, questions, concerns as we go along. And appreciate everyone taking the time to watch my videos. So uh, next week, I'm going to go ahead and get this thing weighed, get an empty weight. And then I'm going to start getting that thing jacked up in the air and swing that main gear and get those gear door done. So... All right, folks, uh, again, thanks for watching, and I'll uh, catch you guys next week. So this is Donna Don out.